Hello and welcome to the News Minute. On February 15, the Supreme Court of India termed electoral bond scheme as unconstitutional and stuck down that scheme. And the Supreme Court had also directed the SBI to furnish all the data related to electoral bonds to the Election Commission of India and had asked the Election Commission of India to make that data public by March 13. But now the SBI has approached the Supreme Court and has said that they want some more time to process all the data. Precisely 116 days, which means that the data will be made public only after the general elections 2024. And now this has raised several questions about the intention of uh, the uh, State Bank of India and also the Government of India. Is the Government of India pressurizing the State Bank of India? That's the big question. To talk about this, I have with me Thomas Franco, who is the former General Secretary of All India Bank Officers Confederation. Thank you so much for talking to us, sir. You have been part of the banking system. You exactly know how the banking system works. What exactly is your first thought when you first heard about the SBI approaching the Supreme Court and asking for some more time to collate all the data, to process all the data? The moment I saw the message that State Bank, after 20 days, has gone to the Supreme Court saying that we require time, I felt very funny. It's an utter lie. State Bank should not have made this statement. I could understand that there is a very big pressure from the government of India and the chairman of State Bank of India. Because we have worked in this system for so long, from manual to back office to core, core banking solution, State Bank has gone into a transformation. Even in the, during the manual days of accounting, we never required this kind of waiting. Because every day bank's books are balanced. We don't leave the branch without balancing the books. And every day we send the reports to the higher level. It is collated at the... Today, with the core banking solution, everything is known to the top management. Every day, every second the transactions are known. So it is not uh, at all correct to say that we require 116 days more to collate the data related to the electoral bonds, which is just 22,000 odd numbers. So what the uh, SBI says is that they have practical difficulties because some of uh, the electoral bonds uh, or uh, details related to electoral bonds are stored in physical format, some of it is digital. So to try and collate all this information will require some more time. Like you said that every day the, odd, uh, the, the books are closed and there is an audit system in the banking uh, sector. So when all this happens, so what exactly is uh, the SBI trying to do? Are they trying to confuse the Supreme Court or are they trying to buy some more time or are they trying to cover up for the government? They are definitely trying to cover up for the government. I am sure Supreme Court will not accept this, the court should not, because the moment a purchaser comes to purchase the bond, whatever is physical what they are saying, it can be only the physical bond which is kept in the… That are printed. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a printed uh, from the security press or RBI supply. Apart from that, when it is purchased, a KYC norm is followed. The money is transferred from somebody's account. There is no cash, cash transaction. So automatically it is put through in the system. Then the person takes it, it's a bearer bond, he gives to the political party or he hands over to somebody who will go and give to the political party. Political party has to encash it. And they come again through the bank system only. It is not paid in cash. It is credited to their account. So while issuing, there is a transaction number. While paying it, again, that transaction number is matched to know whether it is the genuine bond which has been given by the bank. And the transaction is closed and money is paid. So the same day, everything is reconciled. And the, and same, and, and the same day, the transaction will also enter into the books. Yes. 
Oh, it's all accounted for, right? Definitely. Mm. You cannot hold it for even a, mm. uh, an hour. Mm. It has to be put through in this system. And from this system, now the account goes to the Mumbai main branch, which mm. is the authorized branch to collate this system. Mm. So Mumbai branch has every details. As you said, the accounts are audited. Annually auditing is taking place. And for five years, why should they collate the data for five years now? Every year, annual closing is done. Everything is balanced. And uh, these transactions are not put through every day. Only it's four times in a year. Specific date. Yeah. yeah. Specific Four month. times in a year, specific date. Of course, government changes the dates and whenever they want to money, just before the election, they announce some dates, but that window is for five to seven days. So the moment that is over and that person has encashed, only thing you have to see is whether any bond which has been sold has not been encashed. Mm. That you will know from the system that, okay, 10 bonds are worth this much of money is still outstanding in my system. It is not encashed. So this absolutely does not require any time at all. Why state bank has to misguide the Supreme Court, cheat the people of the country? 48 crore customers are there in State Bank of India. They're, they're on good faith, people are banking with State Bank of India, which has a great credibility, great history of more than 200 years. And State Bank of India are doing this kind of a funny argument to the Supreme Court will definitely dent on the image of the bank and on the faith of the faith in the bank. So when you said, uh, when you started this conversation, you said that there, there is some kind of pressure from the government. Has this been throughout, uh, you know, has this been the case uh, throughout as far as state bank is concerned after they started doing this electoral bond scheme? Or what, what exactly do you mean by pressure? See, we have seen recorded instances of government's pressures. We have seen during the time of Sanjay Gandhi, then State Bank Chairman was pressurized to give a particular loan, which he said no. Mr. Pranab Mukherjee was the Minister of State for Finance that time. He had personally called him and asked him, R.K. Talwar. Hmm. He said no. Without following the norms, with the state bank will not give the loans. He threatened that uh, we'll take action against you. He said, okay, take action. State bank chairman cannot be removed just like that. They asked him to resign. He refused to resign. And we have seen this kind of pressure, especially on giving loans. The finance minister calls the chairman, MDs of the bank, say that by this date you should release this much of loans under the government sponsored scheme. We are put under pressure, we do that. We were put under pressure during the demonetization. Mm. Not even a, just two day window was given without uh, giving us adequate cash. We still managed. So in many ways pressures are put and uh, there are one more thing. See, as per the law, every bank has to have an officer director and an employee director in the public sector bank. This government after 2014 has not filled up that vacancies. We have filed from the All India Bank Officers Confederation a case in the Delhi High Court. Six years the case is going on. The government of India is putting pressure on the bank not to send the names. Mm. Create some reason to say that no, there is a delay, that we are doing some verification. So this kind of pressure we have come across earlier also. But this is something exceptional. The highest court in the country, the Supreme Court is telling you that you provide this data to the Election Commission of India so that it is made public. And they have said that this whole thing is illegal. Yeah. Electoral board scheme itself is illegal. They have taken so many years, that is a sad thing. So many crores have been transacted. But when the Supreme Court says that you follow this instruction, how can State Bank of India say that 
Tell a lie that through a weary quarter 116 days more. I think the Supreme Court should take severe action against the Chairman of State Bank of India on this. Okay, he is the man who is responsible for coming up with an excuse like this. Yes. This is such a serious issue. Without the consent of State Bank Chairman, nothing could be done. So he is party to this decision, definitely. Mm. He should not have been. Whatever pressure. You have a system which you have to follow. And you have to follow the rules of the country. When the Supreme Court says that you do this, why you can, should you try to help the government? When it is very clear that the days asked is to coincide with the days by which the elections will be over. They don't want the public to know to whom this bonds were issued and to whose, which political party this was given. Once the list comes out, we will know who are the people who donated. Already you have published data on 30 cases where there were pressures put on the companies or the people by the Enforcement Directorate, by the CBA, and then they go and give some bond purchases donations. and donations. And then slowly the case is withdrawn. We are seeing this whitewashing taking place in the case of people switching over from one political party to the ruling party. The same thing is happening. And uh, the banks should not be party to these things. So now that the banks are party to a scheme like an electoral bond scheme, which the Supreme Court has termed it as unconstitutional, as someone who is from the banking sector, what exactly is the sentiment that is prevailing among the bank employees or people who are associated with banks? Because banks do require some kind of integrity. You cannot run a scheme that is illegal and a scheme where the general public cannot know what exactly is happening, who is giving the money, who is getting the money, and when it is concerning, uh, when, when it is concerned about elections. So as a, as a person from a banking background, what exactly is the sentiment? See, the moment this news came out, Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook is flooded with these comments. Existing employees, retired employees questioning, how State Bank can give this kind of a reply? Because everybody knows that the system is such that you don't require any time. And you have a new operating system, but specially for electoral exactly. bonds. Exactly. Well. This was in uh, replied in an RTA query. Hmm. That bank has updated the IT system for the electoral bonds alone. Hmm. So now how can you say that party is manual, party is computer? This is uh, really not acceptable. But the sentiment of the people, the, as I have spoken to association leaders, union leaders, I have spoken to my colleagues in service, they are all laughing. How our bank could go and say like this? This will definitely affect the image of the bank. And you can see Twitter, the type of comments given by political parties. I think some political parties are already going to demand the resignation of the Chairman of State Bank of India. Because you are trying to camouflage something to protect somebody in power, which is not your duty. And why should a bank do something like that? That's the question. See, when the government decides that they will have a scheme like, an elect like electoral bonds, and it's the SBI which is going to execute the scheme, but after that, it's not the bank's problem, right? Like which party got how much money, if it is a ruling party or an opposition party, what, whichever party got money, it's not the bank's uh, job to protect that particular party, right? Like now, do you think that the banks are exceeding their mandate or like are they being pushed to do something like that to be a part of this entire cover-up? Or do you think that something terribly has gone wrong in the electoral bond scheme? What is your suspicion? Definitely something bad has happened in the a big scam. scheme. It is a scam. And we will know who are the people who have given this money. And that the public of the country will come to know and it will have an effect on the elect election. That's what they are scared. And in the banking system, I am sure, up to the top level, to the, up to the level of managing directors, 
we have such honest, sincere officers. But the state bank chairman should have given a ruling that let us not uh, disclose the fact now. And that is for selfish interest. This has happened earlier also. Mrs. Sarandadi Patacharya, when she was chairman of State Bank of India, she got into an uh, alliance with the Geo Payment Bank. State Bank contributed 30% shareholding in Geo Payment mm, Bank, mm. which was widely criticized. And that time, the Reliance had taken a lot of loans. And quite a lot of loans given to Anil Ampani was going bad at that time itself. And now we know the amount of write-offs which has taken place for uh, Anil Ampani, which is taken over by Mukesh Ampani, some of the company. But after the, her retirement, she was appointed as board of director in Reliance. So is it not a selfish interest for... Direct conflict was, of interest. Yes. Yeah. Maybe this chairman who is already under extension and there has been crit uh, criticism that he has got the extension due to um, uh, Adani. Okay. Otherwise, he would have retired uh, some eight months back. But when the state bank extended another 34,000 crores loans after the Hindenburg expose also, he got the extension and some people have written about it. So maybe he is looking for another job after his retirement. There will be a cooling period. After that, he will get some position. Okay. If you have to term the entire process, the SBI's uh, you know reasons that the SBI has given to the Supreme Court in one word, what would you say? It's a historic blunder SBI has done. It is cheating the people of the country. That's not acceptable. They should revert back, immediately submit the list to the Supreme Court. Right, sir. Thank you so much for talking to us. So there, uh, Mr. Thomas Franco, who has been part of uh, the banking system, who is in, still in touch with uh, uh, several uh, bank officers, he says that uh, the SBI is committing a historic blunder because the SBI's mandate is not to cover up for the ruling government or for any political party. They have, uh, uh, you know, they, they have uh, the responsibility of, uh, you know, telling the general public as to what exactly has happened in the electoral bond scheme. And now this cover-up is something which is unprecedented. In Chennai, Shabir Ahmed for the News Minute.